For 63 years, the fate of 60 men and a naval legend remained one of World War II's most enduring mysteries. The USS Wahoo, nicknamed the One Boat Wolfpack for Commander Mush Morton and his audacious third patrol, reported it was clear of the strait and was commencing its seventh patrol. Then, nothing. In October 1943, the most aggressive submarine in the Pacific disappeared. This is the story of USS Wahoo. This documentary examines the established facts surrounding her final patrol and the international search that finally found the wreck, confirming how one of America's most celebrated submarines met its end, and how Morton's command forged that fearsome reputation in the first place. To understand that reputation, you have to see how the one-boat Wolfpack took shape under a new commander. Lieutenant Commander Dudley W. Mush Morton replaced Lieutenant Commander Marvin G. Kennedy on the last day of 1942. Having served as Wahoo's executive officer on its first two war patrols, he knew the boat, the crew, and the limitations they had faced. This change in command marked a fundamental shift in the submarine's operational philosophy. Morton instilled a culture of relentless attack that prioritized sinking enemy shipping above all caution. The submarine's reputation for success was built on a foundation of extreme danger. Morton pushed Wahoo into heavily defended Japanese waters, areas other submarines avoided. His tactics defied conventional submarine doctrine. He demonstrated a willingness to surface and engage enemy vessels with deck guns a high-risk maneuver that exposed the submarine to direct counterattack. He also trusted his executive officer, Lieutenant Dick O'Kane, to man the periscope during attacks, an unusual delegation that sharpened their attack rhythm and kept Morton free to manage the broader fight. This aggressive approach yielded remarkable results. The crew's discipline under Morton's leadership produced a record of destruction. Across three successive patrols, culminating in the celebrated fifth, Wahoo launched rapid, coordinated attacks that sank 93,281 long tons of shipping and damaged another 30,880 long tons. On the fifth patrol alone, in just 10 days, Wahoo executed 10 torpedo attacks against eight different targets. Admiral Chester W. Nimitz recognized the sustained impact with a gold star in lieu of a second Navy cross. Wahoo accumulated six battle stars, a testament to its effectiveness. This doctrine also drove Morton toward the most contested waters on the map. The Sea of Japan represented a critical strategic objective. It served as a vital supply route for Japan, connecting the home islands to occupied territories and essential raw materials. Disrupting this lifeline promised outsized results for the risk. Morton's decision to force a passage into the Sea of Japan accepted that risk. Narrow straits, shallow shelves, and dense patrols favored the defender. Yet the potential for decisive disruption was irresistible. As Wahoo prepared for its seventh patrol, the crew carried forward the same aggressive ethos a new piece of technology promised a different kind of attack. The final transmission came as Wahoo shaped her run north. Wahoo's seventh patrol began with a calculated shift in armament. Commander Morton chose to load the Mark 18 electric torpedoes rather than risk another patrol plagued by the Mark 14's defects. Brooches, erratic runs, and duds had marred his sixth patrol. The Mark 18's electric drive left no bubble wake and offered a different failure profile, but it was still largely untested in combat. The boat pressed through the Kuril approaches toward the sealed sea of Japan, a route the Japanese treated as a guarded corridor. During this final patrol, Morton attacked aggressively. Japanese sources later credited him with four sinkings totaling roughly 13,000 tons including the passenger cargo ship Konron Maru, whose loss was announced by the Dome News Agency on October 5th. The last traceable movement came with a surface transit through La Perouse Strait, the narrow exit between Hokkaido and Sakhalin. 
It was the fastest way out after a strike, but also the most exposed. Japanese aircraft and patrol craft watched that channel closely. On October 11th, 1943, Japanese reports describe contact with a surfaced submarine in the strait and a violent, sustained response. An anti-submarine aircraft delivered bombs, one of which scored a direct hit near the conning tower. Surface units then prosecuted with depth charges. It was a combined air-sea attack that lasted through the day, and Japanese accounts recorded it as a successful kill. Decades later, the wreck would confirm the forensic detail. Heavy damage around the conning tower, consistent with an aerial bomb. In that instant, the hunter vanished into the deep, and with it, 60 men sealed in silence. For the United States Navy, what followed was absence. No further signals, no wreck position, only scattered enemy claims and a missing submarine that had crossed and recrossed the most dangerous waters in the theater. Wahoo was declared overdue on December 2nd, 1943, and stricken from the Naval Vessel Register on December 6th, 1943. The loss reverberated through the submarine force and led to a reassessment of operations in the Sea of Japan, which would not reopen to United States submarines until mine detection equipment arrived in June 1945. That official notification began a long wait for answers. No proof, only reports from the other side of the war. The next chapter is what that silence meant and how it would shape the search that followed. For families at home, the silence hardened into years. The Navy's formal notice in December 1943, stating it was overdue and presumed lost, began a long period of uncertainty for the families of the 60 crewmen. Conflicting reports and no physical evidence left Wahoo's fate open to speculation. There was no definitive answer, only the ambiguity of a loss without a confirmed location or cause. Post-war analysis of Japanese records offered crucial clues. An aerial patrol report describing an attack in La Perouse Strait in October 1943 provided a plausible account. Yet Cold War realities made the proposed wreck site inside a strategically sensitive strait. Between Russia and Japan, the wreck site was effectively inaccessible to Western divers and survey ships. The case receded into footnotes complicated by Geopolito and the absence of a verifiable position. The tide began to shift in the mid-1990s. In 1995, the Wahoo Project Group formed, led by a relative of Commander Morton, bringing personal stakes to a technical search. The team faced the task of reconciling fragmented Allied and Japanese archives with shifting seabed charts and inconsistent wartime coordinates. They scoured U.S. submarine war patrol reports and matched them against Japanese records of anti-submarine operations in the Strait. This work demanded unusual partnerships. American researchers provided archival expertise, extracting every possible detail about Wahoo's final movements. Japanese historians translated and contextualized wartime logs and after-action reports, restoring the other half of the timeline. Australian members contributed technical diving knowledge crucial to planning a viable search. Russian oceanographic teams, with unique access to La Perouse Strait, supplied the seabed survey capabilities needed to test the paper trail against the sea floor. One figure proved especially influential. Japanese Vice Admiral Kazuo Ueda worked with the group and advanced. A precise assessment of where Wahoo likely lay, an analysis that would be borne out in 2006. His contribution underscored the international nature of the effort and the value of integrating both sides' records. By painstakingly correlating patrol routes, reported sinkings, and Japanese anti-submarine activity with currents and bathymetry, the team narrowed the search area from hundreds of square miles to a handful of grids. The archives had done all they could. The next step required instruments in the water and a ship over the target. Echoes on the sonar offered the first hard evidence. The search entered its final phase in the summer of 2006, 
shifting from paper trails to the cold, dark waters of La Perouse Strait. The international team coordinated with Russian partners known as Iskra, whose access and equipment could work the strait's difficult conditions. The search area, though narrowed by years of research, remained vast. The weather was unforgiving, with strong currents and frequent fog, and the technology offered no guarantee against a wreck that had eluded detection for over six decades. Electronic surveys conducted in 2005 had already flagged a promising contact. In July 2006, Iskra investigated the site, bringing fresh capacity to validate what the archives and earlier sweeps suggested. They began a methodical survey of the seabed. Side-scan sonar swept wide lanes, its acoustic pulses reflecting off the bottom and any objects on it, building a textured image of the seafloor. Operators scrutinized each return for the silhouette of a Gato-class boat. The depth, about 213 feet, was manageable, but powerful currents could drag the towed sensor offline and smear the images. 63 years of marine growth could soften outlines and mask distinctive features, making positive identification harder than the screen suggested. After days of searching, a long, slender object appeared upright on the bottom. Its dimensions fit Wahoo's class. This was the critical moment, but sonar alone could not close the case. The team launched a remotely operated vehicle for visual confirmation. The ROV descended through turbid water, its lights cutting a tight cone. The wreck resolved into view, intact, and resting on an even keel. The camera panned slowly across the hull, then settled on the conning tower. There, the decisive evidence. A large section of the tower was mangled and torn open. The damage was consistent with a direct hit from an aerial bomb near the conning tower, as described in the 1943 Japanese patrol report. The acoustic image had led them in, and the video made the identification unambiguous. The long wait for answers was over. Wahoo lay where the records pointed, sealed in silence but no longer lost without a trace. What remained was to reckon with what that discovery meant, for the families, for Morton's legacy, and for the story this wreck now tells. What followed was acknowledgement and the weight of finality. The discovery of USS Wahoo closed a tragic chapter in naval history. For the families of the 60 crewmen, Official confirmation by the U.S. Navy on October 31st, 2006, brought long-awaited closure and affirmed the bravery of Commander Morton and his crew. Wahoo earned six battle stars for World War II service, a record built on audacious leadership and the limits of wartime technology. The submarine's aggressive tactics achieved remarkable success, but carried immense risk.